As a blockchain developer, you can make money by coding for other people. You probably already know this, but what you might not know is that there are many other ways you can monetize your blockchain skills and some of these methods allow you to make some passive income and earn significantly more than what you would if you were just coding for someone else. So in this video, I'm going to reveal five other ways you can make money with your blockchain skills. If you don't know me, I'm Julian and on my channel Eat The Blocks, I teach blockchain development and how to find your first blockchain job. And before we continue, I'd like to make a quick announcement. I'm working on a new course on advanced solidity. So if you are interested and you want to receive some exclusive previews and be notified when the course comes out, make sure to register with the link down below. The first way to monetize your skills as a blockchain developer is to invest in DeFi or decentralized finance. So there are several ways to do it, so let's go over them. So first, you can just in invest in some DeFi tokens. So you just do some research on some various DeFi protocol and you invest your money in such and such tokens. That's the most simple and with your knowledge as a blockchain developer, you have a better way to evaluate if your project is worth it or not. However, this is a very simplistic way to invest in DeFi and there are some other ways that are actually better than that. So another way you can make money in DeFi is by investing as a liquidity provider. So for example, on Uniswap or Compound, you can actually send your tokens to these protocols and basically you will be a liquidity provider and you will earn some trading fee or in the case of Compound, you will uh, receive some interest because you are actually lending your tokens. So that's a way that is slightly smarter than just investing in different tokens because you require to do some research in different uh, DeFi protocol. So that's uh, slightly better. And if you wanted to do the same thing on some centralized exchange, for example, be a market makers, that would be actually very difficult. You would need a lot of capital, a lot of technical skills, but in DeFi, this is super easy to be a liquidity provider. Next, you can also do what we call the yield farming. So yield farming is a way to boost the interest that you get from all these different DeFi protocol. That was introduced by the Compound protocol a couple of months ago. So the idea with yield farming is that first you invest as a liquidity provider in a DeFi protocol. Then on top of the trading fee, you also get rewarded with what we call governance tokens. So these are basically tokens that allow you to vote on for the evolution of the DeFi protocol. And this in itself has a certain value. So if you add the value of this governance token plus the trading fee, it actually make a total return that is actually quite substantial. And you can even do some sort of compounded yield farming by taking the liquidity provider token you get from one DeFi protocol and reinvesting it in another DeFi protocol. And so this way you really compound your yield farming, but it gets more and more sophisticated and also dangerous. So be really careful with that. If you're interested in yield farming, I have another video on my channel that explains this. So everything I explain here is pretty basic. You don't actually need to be a blockchain developer to do it. If you're just a regular non-technical person, you can still do it. You still have an edge as a blockchain developer because you are technical, so you can better understand what's going on. But can we find another way to invest in DeFi where you can really leverage way better your skills as a blockchain developer? Yes, we can. So in DeFi, you can make money with what we call programmatic trading. So that means that you will make money with your code. So everything will be automated. You will not click on some button manually and do anything. No, it will be only with code. So for example, you can do liquidation. So you have a couple of protocol where you have this ID of a collateral, for example, in Compound. If you want to borrow some tokens, first you need to provide some collateral in case you don't reimburse the loan. And if at any time you don't have enough collateral to secure your loan, that will be what we call a margin call and a liquidation. And basically anybody will be able to take some of your collateral as a reward in exchange for providing the missing collateral. So 
what you can do is you run scripts that constantly monitor the blockchain for this sort of opportunity and when they arise you send a transaction to do the liquidation and you get a big reward of usually it's about uh, five percent so if you are doing this on a large loan quickly they can add up and make a really really nice return another thing you can do is arbitrage so with arbitrage you monitor the prices on different decentralized exchanges and sometime when the price of some asset move really quickly for a very short amount of time, you can have some discrepancy in the price of the same asset on two different decentralized exchanges. Maybe that Ether will be $300 on one exchange and $305 on another one. So in this case, you buy Ether where it's cheap and you sell it where it's expensive and you pocket it the difference. So usually the price difference will be quite small, but if you do it on a large amount of money, quickly that will make a really significant return. So the problem of these two things, liquidation and arbitrage, is that they require you to have some big, a lot of capital. So how can you do if that's not your case? Well, you can use what's called a flash loan. So with a flash loan, you can have access to a huge quantity of capital, $1 million, $2 million, without any collateral. But the trick is you can borrow this money just for one single transaction but that's enough to do a liquidation or an arbitrage and if you want to learn more about how you can do flash loan arbitrage i have another video that talk about this i also have a course on flash loan arbitrage so with this programmatic trading in DeFi, we start to leverage our skills as a blockchain developer that's not really accessible to the average DeFi investor so this is our little niche our little hack that we can leverage so that's super cool and next i'm going to show you another cool way to make money as a blockchain developer So as a blockchain developer, you can do some mining or staking. So let's start with mining. So with mining, you will run an Ethereum node. So that's the software that actually run the Ethereum network. Everybody can run it. And by running this software, so you will try to mine new blocks. And when you successfully mine a new block, you get rewarded one with the transaction fees that are inside the block. Plus you also get a reward as the miner of this block. The money you can make by mining a block is quite substantial. It can be $10,000, $20,000, even more. It depends on the transaction fees that are inside the block. So on the paper, that sounds like a great opportunity. And at the very beginning of Ethereum, that was still possible to make money as a miner, but now miner, mining has become way more competitive. And it has become almost impossible for an individual person to successfully mine blocks. So I don't necessarily recommend to do this. Instead, what you can do is focus on staking. As you might know, Ethereum will transition from a system of proof of work to proof of stake. So the mining process will be totally different. In the future, everybody can become a miner, except we don't say miner anymore, we say validator. And the way you do this is by staking some Ether. So you will basically lock some Ether in the blockchain and you will get a pretty nice reward on that. Some people say that you can make up to 10, 12% uh, on that amount, but Vitalik Buttering mentioned on Twitter is probably gonna be closer to two to 6%. Well, when you think about it, that's still higher than if you just uh, left your money on your bank account. But the thing is the minimum to be a validator is 32 ether. You have to lock 32 ether in the Ethereum blockchain. So at today price this is roughly i think uh, seven thousand dollar or eight thousand dollar so that's not a small sum but if you can afford it uh, that can be quite interesting so as of at the time of releasing this video ethereum 2.0 is not released yet so you cannot do any staking now but there is already a test net that has been released so if you want to train first for how to set up your own validator node. Uh, you can find some tutorial to explain you how to do this. 
And after when Ethereum 2.0 is finally released, uh, probably sometime next year, then you can do some real staking and start to monetize your Ether. So you can do staking for Ethereum, but also for other blockchain project. For example, you can be a validator for Chainlink. So Chainlink is a system of Oracle. Oracles are a system that allow you to inject outside data inside the blockchain. I won't get into the detail, but the idea with Chainlink is that you will lock some link tokens and you will run a validator node that will help them to secure the network and in exchange you will get some reward. So what I like about staking is that it's not too technical. So even though if you are just a beginner, you're not like a super advanced coder, you can still do it because you don't really need to know how to code. It's more about um, how to follow some tutorials to run some command line tool and maybe run some software uh, on a server. But once it's running, this is like a money making machine and you don't really need to, uh, to do any sort of uh, administration or any custom coding. But the good thing is that even though this is not too technical, this is still intimidating enough so that end user probably won't bother to follow these tutorials. So that's a really sweet spot. So if you are a beginner, that would be a good way to get started. Okay, so next I'm going to talk of a really cool project in Ethereum that has to do with open source. So Gitcoin is this project that want to solve a very important problem in open source. So in open source, you have all these developers who work for free, who produce a lot of value and this minority of people provide huge value to a majority of other people who are freeloaders who just uh, use this free software and make money with them, but they never pay these developers who spend all this, who make all this effort to create and maintain this software. So it's not really fair. So Geekcoin was a groundbreaking project that allowed to pay open source developers in a very easy way. So what happened is that you have many companies that use open source software and they might be willing to pay some developers a little bit, but maybe not as a full-time employee. So with a bounty, you create a task that anybody can complete. When the task has been completed, then some money is sent to the developer who completed this task. So you as a blockchain developer, you can go to the website of Gitcoin in the section where you can see all the bounties and you check out the different bounty. And if you feel like you can do one of them, first you need to connect your GitHub account. Then you will apply to the bounty, you get accepted, you start to work on it. And when you're done, you do a pull request. This will be reviewed by the person or the company who created the bounty. And if they are happy, they accept your contribution and they send you the money. So it's a sort of, uh, it's a little bit like freelancing, but done with this tool, uh, Gitcoin, that is super popular. It's not necessarily the best for total beginners because usually you have to be a little bit um, independent when you do that sort of things. So if you're just getting started, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this, but if you already done a couple of projects, there might be something worth checking out. Another thing you can do with Gitcoin that not many people know about is that you can create a grant. So if you are creating a project on Ethereum that can serve the community, you create a new grant. So basically you explain to people uh, what your project is about and people will, will fund your project. They will pay you in DAI, in Ether, and after you can use this money to pay yourself and complete your project. So that's a, a sort of alternative mechanism for funding your project. And that's pretty sweet. If you check out the list of grant on the website of Geekcoin, you will see that for some project, they managed to raise tens of thousands of dollars. So it can be quite substantial. 
And the project you create don't have to be too sophisticated. For example, there was this guy who created this website, yieldfarming.info. So that's a website that helps you to figure out the different yield farming opportunities. And as you can see, the website is super basic, but he was still able to create a Gitcoin grant and get some money for it. So next, I'm going to talk about the ultimate way to monetize your blockchain skill. So in terms of how much you can make, that's the highest possible. So if you create your own blockchain project, sky is the limit. You can make millions, even tens of millions. It can be absolutely huge. One example of that is the guy who created EtherDelta. So EtherDelta is the first decentralized exchange that existed on Ethereum. So that guy made more than $10 million in trading fields. And if you see his website, it wasn't something too complex and that was uh, just him working on it. So in general, most decentralized applications monetize their project by charging a trading fee. So that's the case of most projects in decentralized finance. Games also work that way. So your challenge will be to get some user and get this user to actually use your decentralized applications. The problem when you launch your own blockchain project is that it can really take a lot of time to code everything. It can take several months to several years. And during all this time, you have to fund the project with your own money. And that's quite a risky thing to do. So if you can get some external funding, that's way better. So as I mentioned before, you can use a Geekon grant for that. But another way, which is often overlooked by a lot of founders, is to participate in some hackathons. So hackathons are events for competitive programming. So you go there, you meet people, you form a team, you decide which project you're going to work on. You work on it for a couple of days. Usually this is quite intense. And at the end, there is a jury that decide what are the best project. And if you get selected as one of the top projects, you get some rewards. So it can be anywhere between 10 to $20,000. So this is nice, but this is not enough. But the side benefit of participating into a hackathon is that you get a lot of exposure and you can have some VC that come to see you a couple of months after. That's what happened to Instadap. So Instadap, this is this DeFi project that got really popular. That's basically a um, an interface that allow you to use different DeFi project very easily. And I was created by two Indian brother. I think when they created that in 2018, they were 18 or 19, something like this. They participated in a hackathon. They were one of the finalists. They won the prize of the hackathon. And I think that six months after that, there was this big VC fund that invested two million in them. Uh, that's uh, Andresen and uh, Horowitz, so which is uh, one of the most prestigious fund in the Silicon Valley. So usually if you want to get access to that sort of investment fund, you really need to hustle for years. You need to get into the circuit of investors, participate in all these events, and maybe at some point they're going to notice you. But these guys, they managed to get a huge investment, like two million. This is really substantial, like just six months after they participated into this hackathon. So that's really amazing. And a lot of people who want to launch their blockchain project, they don't necessarily think of that way to get funding. So keep this in mind. So where do you go from there? Well, if you're interested in how you can develop your career as a blockchain developer, I have a full playlist full of very useful advice for blockchain developers. So I'll see you there.